first one I've ever seen in real life. Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifty. This is Mid-Century Wasting. Hello everyone, welcome to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie and that's Blake. We are outside of Kalamazoo Antique Mall in Michigan. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Sisters, Oregon, not Michigan. We drove straight there, 20 I hours. I don't think I'd be dressed longer, this probably. warm if I was in Michigan. It's kind of hot today. Hot oh yeah, it might be, it might be. Summer. I don't know what it's like in Michigan. I expect it to be winter all year round. Anyway, we're going in to see what we can find in a new and cheek mall. find anyone whose soul is what is mine but I'm falling right into you and I didn't think that I could find anyone whose soul is what is mine but I'm falling right into you and I didn't think that I could find anyone whose soul is what is mine but I'm falling right into you and I didn't think that I could find anyone whose soul is what is mine Heaven riding shotgun next to you. Never thought that this wild heart would ever stop looking for something new. And it feels like I found a piece of heaven riding shotgun next to you. Never thought that this wild heart would ever stop looking for something new. As you can see, I've found a little stash of Van Briggle. This one, when I flipped it over, it had a different signature. And at first I thought it might be a fake or a knockoff, hence my face here in a second. But after doing a little bit of research, I believe this is the older original signature that they used before they started using their logo as the signature on the bottom. One thing I will say about this antique store, even though they were pretty pricey, they did have some absolutely beautiful display cases and everything was really fun to look at. I found some Pyrex. This set, I need the two smallest bowls, so I wasn't interested in it. You know I can always tell how expensive a place is based on what they're selling the Pyrex for. This reverse primary set is harder to find. I don't find that one in a complete set very often. The prices were comparable to what things go for down in Southern California at home, which is on the higher end, but they had some very good pieces here and they were in good condition, so I was happy to see at least they had high prices on good quality pieces that people would want in their collection. Nothing is worse than seeing an absolutely destroyed dishwasher damaged Pyrex bowl with a $100 price tag on it just because the vendor knows that it's Pyrex and thinks it's valuable.
Those are interesting. I haven't seen those ones before. Plus Tex, Los Angeles. That's funny. Those are kind of cool. I might think about those. There's another one of those things now. I'm going to see them everywhere. Now that I bought two of them, thinking they were candlesticks, and they're not. Wow, I have good taste. We've got neat displays in here. Oh my god, look at those bunnies. Wow. Look at this. I don't think this is for sale. Yeah, it has prices on it. It's like a museum display. No. What is it? From the Bell Tolls. First edition? Mm hmm. Dust jackets kind of jacked up. It's probably rare to even find it though oh, with yeah. the dust jacket, no matter what the condition. The prices on both of these sets of drawers were outrageous. I had no idea what was going on here. It was very confusing. I thought this was absolutely the funniest and most adorable cover of any book ever. The happy little hand saw, and look at him. He is, he's so happy. Here are some more beautiful display pieces, although I do think the glass was broken on one of them. And I also love flat files. I'm looking for some for my home, and this cabinet was really nice. I also loved the way they displayed their buttons. They had lots of buttons for sale, and I thought this was quite creative and interesting. This recipe book is part of a series of the ABCs of etc. $10 is a very good price for this book and I have the ABCs of cocktails at home so I decided to pick this up. Here's a cookbook that hasn't aged well. Yikes. super excited about this. It's only $15. I've been wanting one for a really long time. Stoked. Look at this like smoking table. Look how oh, yeah, look how fancy. Yeah. <laughs> People took their smoking very seriously back mm. then. That's a nice crackle glass. I wish I had my black light. I didn't bring it. Mm -mm. And we didn't bring my keys because we took mm -mm. the truck. You are right? So there, Long Beach in the World War. Oh, is it our Long Beach or East Coast Long Beach? Mm. Coast. Probably.
I felt way out of my league in this space. They had a whole bunch of really beautiful fancy things, but clearly this is not the era that I specialize in. And so this kind of stuff was just really out of my wheelhouse. It was fun to look at it though. Go through all those already? Yeah. Okay. How much? Probably five dollars. But that's why. Nothing you want. a really nice museum <laughs> of antiques I don't think they wanted to sell anything there it was just they wanted to display their antiques and put ridiculous prices on it I actually did find two things for myself though that were good deals so I mean like anywhere if you really dig you can probably find something I got that ABC cookbook which I saw people selling those for about $35 each in Palm Springs. Of course, Palm Springs is expensive too, but I bought that one for $10. I have the ABCs of cocktails, and I bought that on Etsy for uh, like more than $10. So I know that's a good deal, and I like those, those books. Like they're really cute with really cute graphics. And then I've got that tin top with the space stuff on it. And I've been wanting that for a long time and that always goes for way more than $15. So I got a good deal on that. So I got two things for myself there. <laughs> and that's it. So yeah, not, not good for resale. Anyway, we're still in Sisters. We are going to their farmer's market now. My cousin is in a folk band and she's singing at this farmer's market. So we're gonna watch that and then we might go to another antique store after we have lunch this afternoon. So. We'll see, but did you have comments on this uh, Kalamazoo antique store, Blake? I uh, I remember now why I f didn't remember it. <laughs> Not memorable. <laughs> memorable. Really anything, I like, so yeah, I mean, it it's tough out here anyway for but the you, stuff that we're looking for. But you found some stuff. I found so. I found the two things that I wanted at that store, and they were priced good for me. I feel like up here, you don't get a lot of the mid-century stuff. N not as much. But when you do find it, it's priced pretty good because people, it's not as desirable here in central rural Oregon. So Blake just is exhausted, apparently. All right, we're gonna go watch my cousin, check out the little farmer's market, and then uh, we'll reconvene. Okay, this is the biggest dandelion Holy I've shit. ever seen in my entire life. Here it is compared to my hand. They don't make them like that in Southern California. Wow, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Never seen anything like that before. It's hard to tell you how I feel. This baby, I've never felt something so real. I just lost you in the moment and I never wanna leave. And 
on the phone, we talk for hours and we laugh till we fall asleep. And when we're wrapping up in blankets and you're playing your guitar, I just want to be around you and I want you as you are, as you are. up here too. It's getting windy and kind of cloudy around here. mine I was so excited to find these Taylor Smith Taylor Cafe mugs because at home I have two saucers that I need mugs for. It was absolutely perfect. I loved these cute anthropomorphic tea bag holders and the price was amazing, but as you see, they were broken. Some of them were glued back together or cracked and they were just in too bad of shape, so I left them behind. This space had some really nice things. This antique store in general is a really good mix of true antiques plus mid-century and some bohemian. They really have a good mix of things here. And this space was one of the ones that had a little bit more mid-century things. Things were priced very fairly in this space, but they were just slightly out of reach for me for resale. But it did have some really good stuff and it was fun to look at. Of course, this little yellow tea canister caught my eye at $2.50. I had to give it a look. It is the Lustro Wear kind. This was so tempting at such a cheap price, but the letters were just too far gone for me. So I left it behind.
I saw these antique leather postcards last time I was here and I looked at them again and they are really, really cool. The only hang up I had about them was the sayings and the little jokes on them were so old. They were so outdated that they were just confusing and I just couldn't understand them. So I didn't buy any. This booth obviously caught my eye with this $50 Dorothy Thorpe set and an amazing Panther TV lamp. It was $149 and really lovely. And then I pan up. Oh, oh hello. Yeah, clearly I was gonna have some fun in this space. This amber glass bird caught my attention right away. It looks like the Swedish kind maybe. And it was in a color that I don't normally see. It wasn't quite amber, it was more root beer colored. There were some other interesting glass pieces and this really cute dog eyeglass holder. They had the kitsch, they had the glass. I was just all over this space, I loved it. Up here at the top, I had to know how much that swung vase was. I had to take pictures to see, but the Fenton Amberina one was $120 and the blue Fenton Swung Compote was $44. Those were pretty good prices. Next in the same space, I picked up this Artisania Rinconata Lion. I've never seen the lion before. I love picking up these pieces. He was $12 and in great shape, so I decided to get him. And then once I decided that, it just opened the floodgates. I decided to buy the Glass Bird too and grabbed the bittersweet off the top shelf. It was $44.95 and missing its lid. But once I had my hands on it, I just couldn't let it go. It was such good quality and beautiful and I loved it. I also picked up these grapes and they were only $10. So I'm like, yep, add them to my pile. I really kind of just blacked out and went hog wild, but they had so many good things in this space. I really could have just walked out with everything. And then I saw they had a glassy baby. I have never seen one of these in person before. So this was really cool. Wow, first one I've ever seen in real life. That's amazing. That's so exciting. These little girly trinket boxes were so cute and at only $5 each, I feel like I should have probably picked those up. Recently, I acquired a large lot of very beautiful turquoise and sterling jewelry. So I've been looking at it a little closer at antique malls and I'm starting to really fall in love with it. I see why so many people go after it. We did already find a crystal decanter for Blake. He was looking for one for a really long time and I'm glad we found one at a good price because they just keep on being expensive every time we see one. What is it about jars of buttons? I just think they're so fun to look at. These were priced really fairly too, $14.99 a jar. I think that's a good deal. This little boy sitting on the toilet was so funny and cute. It was only $7.95 with the slash through it. So that meant it was 40% off. I should have bought him.
here's some really sad Pyrex. It's totally destroyed. At least it wasn't expensive, but I'm still not buying dishwasher damaged Pyrex no matter what it costs. They did have a quilt show going on. It was just wrapping up when we got there. Everybody was packing up and leaving, but apparently they have a big quilt show every year outside. So that's something I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for next year. College clocks mm -hmm. facing down. So if you tend to look up, you're like, oh well, yeah, there. uh huh. It's like how much stuff can you pack into your booth? I always forget to look up too. I stuff. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I am still on a kick and on the hunt for little drawers ever since going to the Office of Collecting and Design in Vegas. This was $16.95 and it was beautiful, but it's just way out of my budget. That's heavy. See this lamp made out of bullets? <laughs> Figured you'd like that. Oh, look at that. 200. That's Yeah, it's a little cheaper than at home. Probably one of them is not in that shape. Maybe. Well, that Heritage USA. I remember now is the one that I kind of I kind of scored big on that one last time we were here. That's the one that's got better prices and more of the kind of stuff that I look for. Yeah. Now I did spend up on a lot of stuff. I spent like a little over a hundred dollars. No, I probably you got a record too. How much was your record? Ten dollars. All right, so I spent like right at exactly a hundred bucks. But I got a bittersweet compote. I got a glass bird that I've never seen in that color before. I got a bundle of Lucite grapes. I got a Artisania Rinconata lion. What else did I get? Oh, I got those flamingos, salt and peppers that are probably for me. I said the grapes. The other thing, those cups that I got, I have two saucers at home that match oh. and I have no cups that go with it. So nice. now I have two complete sets to sell. So, and they were only 10 bucks for the pair. So that was $5 each, so. I'll definitely make my money back on those now that I have sets. So I'm so excited about that. Those were just sitting there waiting for me. They were exactly what I needed. Did I get anything else? I remember last year we went there. I remember I bought like a Doors LA Woman for $30. It was expensive. I yeah. spent a lot. I didn't really know about what I was doing last time, but they were pretty pricey. For records? Yeah, records are pretty pricey there. But I, you know, that doors that I bought last time, I ended up selling it at my at whatnot sale. Oh. And it went for like fifty dollars. So. Well, you still did good then. Yeah, I know, but I don't know, paying up that much for it. I know. A new record. And I. Just hard to do that. I paid up for all this stuff too. I did. Averaging yeah. things out, I did okay. I'm gonna do okay if you just kind of like average it all out. Um, spending a hundred dollars on all that stuff is not that bad. I have a hard time spending forty dollars on something that I'm gonna resell. Even if it's worth twice that much, I'm just, I'm resistant to it because I'm just cheap like that. <laughs> and I'm used to buying stuff at like estate sales where it's, you know, 10 bucks. But, you know, when in Rome, we were there. When was the last time I saw a bittersweet that was anywhere near affordable enough for me to buy? I don't know that I've ever even had my hands on one before to what's, sell. What's a bittersweet? It's that, that orange, oh, okay. that orange glass. Like compote thing, vase, big like wide mouth compote that I bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome, is what it is. And it glows, Blake. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't tested it, but they always glow with the yellow part, like the lighter part. Anyway, that's it for this video. In a couple days, we're gonna be heading towards the coast of Oregon. So stay tuned for those videos. And then coming up at the very end of our trip, we're going to the Portland Rose City Vintage Market and Left Coast Flea, hosted by Laura Caldwell, which I'm super excited about. And George the Antique Nomad's gonna be there. A bunch of people have said that they're going, so there should be a lot of friends to meet up with, and I'm really excited for that. So our Oregon trip is, is just beginning, really. 
we haven't even scratched the surface of what there is to do and see in Oregon. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Say bye, Blake. Bye.